tutorial, we're going to go over blend mill. In the description, I provided a link to download this solid model, and we're going to import that right now. So this is going to be part six, Rev one. And first thing we need to do is line it up to our work coordinate system. So I'm going to turn on my view, I'm going to turn on my gnome, and we can see that it's at the base of the, the part. And I want it to be at the top. So we just need to drop the Z by one inch. So I'm going to go to transform, translate, and then Z negative one. And I'm going to move that, not copy. Okay, cool. So next thing we can do is go to our machine, go to mill, default, and then we're going to go ahead and define our stock. So expand your properties, go to stock setup, and then I'm going to go to add bounding box, and then I'm going to select the cursor next to manual, select my part, and it will auto generate a stock boundary around our solid model here. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK and get out of that. So let's go ahead and dive into it. I'm going to select blend mill and I just have edges selected right now. So I'm going to select this edge and then this edge and try to make sure your arrows are going in the same direction. Um, you might get something kind of funky if they're pointed in opposite directions. So I'm going to click OK on that. I'm going to go to tool. I'm going to create a tool. A flat end mill. We'll just use the default half inch. And then we could spin this at seven grand by 60 and plunge rate. We just do 100. We should be plunging outside of any material. So I'm going to go to cut parameters. We are going to use a zigzag cutting method. And for comp direction, I'm going to select left. And uh, you'll see why for in a second here, we're going to just basically plane this uh, whole step down from this top boss right here. So this is a good method if you're working on a part with just a, like a boss on one side and the rest of it's flat. And then uh, it's a good way of doing that. So I'm going to leave uh, zero stock on the walls and zero stock on the floor. Uh, max step over is 50% and we're just going to uh, feed it in at 100% as well. Uh, assuming that this is aluminum. For depth cuts, we don't need depth cuts. It's only going down a quarter of an inch. And let's do a finish pass on this. And let's uh, leave 50 thou on the stock to finish to uh, clean up afterwards. And I will be using my wear compensation. Down in linking parameters, uh, this is all pretty standard. Uh, so we have a quarter inch retract. We have a hundred thou on our feed plane. Top stock is zero and depth is zero in incremental. And that is based off of the geometry that we selected, which is a quarter inch down. Okay, so let's go ahead and click apply and OK and see what we get. Now you can see that our tool is not leaving our, um, our part at all. It is kind of working within the boundary. And I don't think I really want that. I want it to cut over our boundary. So if we go back into our parameters and we go to cut parameters, we can extend entry and extend exit. And I'm going to do 260 for both. And that's just to make sure our tool plunges outside of material. And it's also going to exit outside the material as well. And it's probably not too obvious right now, but I actually selected the wrong method here and we just select right. Okay, perfect. So you can see that it's just gonna plane the step down and it's also gonna follow the uh, contour. So it kind of uh, 
meshes in the, the two different shapes that we have. We have a straight line and then we have an arc at the end. And it will uh, accommodate that for us. Perfect. So let's go ahead and do the next step down, which is also going to be a blend mill. And same thing as before, we are just selecting edges. And I'm going to make sure that the arrows are going in the same direction. And I'm going to click OK. For tools, same thing, half inch, seven grand at 60 IPM and for plunger rate, I'm going to do 100. And for cut parameters, instead of right or left, we are going to select inside. So we're going to keep the tool inside the boundary this time. And we also still have our extended entry and extended exit, which is perfect. And our depth should be good. To incremental to the geometry that we selected on this 3D model. And I'm going to click Apply and I'm going to click OK. And you can see, let me hide this top toolpath. And if you look down, we have a beautiful entry and exit. And it also morphs from one side into the other. Perfect. And then we could do it one more time for this curved slot that we have here. And I'm going to select this geometry. And then I'm going to select that geometry. Again, arrows are pointed in the same direction. Tool, we'll use the half inch once again. 7,000 at 60 IPM. And we're going to drop it at a hundred and we still want it to cut on the inside of our open slot basically and linking parameters all looking good and there's one thing that we could do if we want to stubby this up and have it wrap it a little bit faster we could select our top of stock and select where there's still going to be material right I'm going to click apply and click OK. So now we have all of our step downs. Sorry, I'm going to hide all that. And let's go ahead and verify and see what's going to happen. And I'll just uh, go ahead and rewind that and slow it down a bit so we could actually watch it. And uh, Mastercam's Verify is actually pretty good. I've never really had a problem going to the machine and it does something other than what it's demonstrating on the Verify. So there we go. There you have it. That's how you could use Blend Mill. And it's a nice tool to implement when you have, uh, you know, you want to face something with a boss on the end of it or you need to... Uh, accommodate a weird curvature slot or you need to merge two different shapes together from one end to the other right all right well thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned look for the next video all right have a good one bye